Hello students, welcome to the EPG Partiala. I am Mrs. Bojwani from DEI Team University, the Alvad Agra. Today we are going to discuss about the module production of virus free plants in the paper on plant biotechnology and crop improvement, the in vitro methods to eradicate viruses from infected plants. You know that the plants are attacked by a variety of uh, phytopathogens which cause damage to the host and result in considerable economic losses. Vegetatively propagated plants like potato, sugarcane and grafted fruit trees and ornamentals are more prone to the damage by the pathogen because they accumulate over the generations. Because if the generation passes through seed, these pathogens are removed. But the vegetatively propagated plants, the pathogen move with the generation to generation. Seed propagated plants are generally free of pathogen, but unfortunately, the progeny raised by seeds are not cloned. So if you have a very important variety which has specific desirable characters and you propagate it by seed, those characters are likely to be lost. Therefore, the, in such cases, to preserve those characters, vegetative propagation is followed. Whereas the plants infected with fungal and bacterial elements can be rescued from the diseases by the application of antibiotics or fungicides, but there is no effective method to control viral diseases, although some viricidal compounds have been identified and tried, but this doesn't seem to be a very practical solution. There are tremendous economic losses by viral diseases, and it is said that on a global basis, the annual losses of crops by viruses are about six times, tens of our ten billion dollars. Yield and the quality of fruits and flowers drops. Productive life and vigor of perennial plants are adversely affected. Flower color and size also suffer. And the viral infection also enhances the susceptibility of the plant to other pathogens. And of course, in the market, if people know that it is affected by virus, the acceptability of the consumer also suffers. And it is observed that the presence of virus sometimes also affect the rate of clonal propagation. One can give example of uh, losses that suffer. The grape wine fan leaf virus causes economic losses to the tune of 1.5 billion US dollars. This alone one virus. The potato leaf roll virus results in 60 to 80 percent yield losses. Sugarcane mosaic virus drops the yield by 50 percent. And many aborted varieties of sugarcane have been gone out of cultivation only because of the accumulation of virus over the generations. Treatment of plants infected by pathogens such as bacteria and fungal diseases and viruses are matter of concern, whereas the bacterial and fungal diseases can be cured by treating them with antibiotics or fungicides as required, viral diseases cannot be cured. And therefore, the horticulturist has the only choice to remove the infected plants and destroy them. But in the long term, perennial trees, it's difficult to remove the trees. Therefore, it is important that disease-free plants are raised from the infected plants. This thermotherapy in nature has many limitations. For example, 
potato leaf virus evades thermotherapy. It's not checked by thermotherapy. And the method is very cumbersome. If you have to treat a branch of a plant, infected plant with hot water, it's very cumbersome to handle it. And after the heat treatment, the survival of the host plant is low. And uh, long thermotherapy may inactivate the resistance factor present in the plant. And that means the plant becomes susceptible to other diseases. And high temperature and high humidity during thermotherapy promotes infestation by insects. Therefore, the in vitro therapy have become very important. The standard tissue culture, of course, eliminates bacteria and viruses because you surface sterilize the tissue before you culture. And if there is a fungus persisting or bacteria are persisting, it becomes visible and you can discard those cultures. But viruses don't become visible, but they cause losses. Holmes, in 1948, based on an observation that in the plants which are infected by virus, there is a gradient of virus tighter in the plants, which reduces as you progress towards the tip of the shoot. And using this information, Holmes was able to produce dahlia by culturing the shoot tips. This technique of shoot tip culture was further standardized for virus elimination by Morrill and Martin in 1952. They also worked on dahlia plants. What they did was to culture 100 micrometer long shoot tips. And when this developed into a shoot, unfortunately the shoots did not root. Therefore, to obtain the full plants, they have to graft this shoot on a healthy seedling stock. And since then, the shoot tip culture has become the most popular technique for virus elimination in plants. And combined with chemotherapy and or thermotherapy, it is even more effective in certain cases. Here's a picture of Muram, who is uh, credited for developing and popularizing the technique of shoot tip culture for virus elimination. Now, what is the basis of shoot tip culture for virus elimination? As I said, there is a gradient of virus in the plant body, the infected plant body, and the tighter of the virus increases with distance from the meristem. Why? One has to ask the question, why is it so? The suggestions are that it is because of the high metabolic activity in the meristem that the virus does not persist there. Meristem tip produces auxin, which probably discourages the multiplication of viruses. And there seems to be a virus inactivity system present in the shoot tip. And of course, in plants, the virus moves through the vascular system. And as we know, the shoot tip does not have the vascular system. The vascular system terminates well before the meristem. And the tissues where there is no vascular tissue, the virus moves through the plasma desmata from one cell to the other. But this method is extremely slow. Therefore, the movement and the migration of virus in the plant body is not able to cope up, keep pace with the growth of the shoot tip. The basic protocol for virus elimination by shoot tip culture is that you take one to two centimeter long shoot tips from the infected plant, wash it and surface sterilize, and take it to the airflow cabinet. Under aseptic conditions, remove unwanted visible tissue, and then use a binocular and carefully remove leaves one by one until a shining apical meristem dome with about a couple of jungus leaves become visible. At this stage, 
give a sharp incision below the dome with a pair of at youngest leaves and transfer the shoot tip to a suitable culture medium. Here you see the shining tip and the glistening tip of the meristem, and you give an incision just below this to culture the shoot tip. Now, what are the factors which are to be taken care of in this technique of shoot tip culture to eradicate viruses? Number one is the explant. It is said that the explant should be taken from actively growing plants during the growth period. In the temperate trees or temperate plants, such as apple and pears, it should be done during the spring. And you have apical meristem available in the main shoot as well as on the lateral shoots or axillary buds, but apical buds are preferred. In prunus, plants exposed to 4 degrees Celsius for six months before excising the shoot tip gave better culturable shoot tips. Survival directly and virus eradication is inversely related to the size of the shoot tip, which means the smaller the shoot tip, better are the chances of virus eradication, but chances of survival are less. On the other hand, if you take a larger shoot tip, it may survive better, but the chances of virus eradication reduce. Therefore, generally, a sub-millimeter shoot tip carrying the meristem and one to two leaf primordia is generally cultured. Meristem has been attempted to eradicate viruses, but it is not a practical explant. The other is, as in all other cases in tissue culture, genotype of the donor plant is always play an important role in the success or the failures. And then, of course, the general factor is the medium. And normally, MS medium has been used, which has supplemented with IA and cytokinin. And in the case of Dahlia, it also required gibberellic acid. Semi-solid medium, and if necessary, liquid medium on filter paper bridge could be used. But semi-solid medium is much better. But if the shoot tip is sensitive to the agar, one can use liquid medium. But in that case, ensure that the shoot tip is not submerged by keeping it at the above the medium by the filter paper bridge. Smaller explants require growth regulators. And as I said, the requirement of growth regulator may vary. For example, Dahlia required only cytokinin. Peanut required oxen and cytokinin. And cassava requires oxen, cytokinin, and gibberellic acid. There are certain viruses which even invade the shoot meristem. In such cases, shoot tip culture alone is not enough to eradicate the viruses, such as cucumber mosaic virus, which invades the meristem, could not be removed by shoot tip culture alone. Therefore, it was combined with thermotherapy. The shoot tip culture combined with thermotherapy has been sometime helpful where the shoot tip alone is not able to eradicate the virus. For example, 50 to 100 percent plants free of PVS and PVX virus were obtained where the plants were treated for 8 to 10 weeks at high temperature. Similarly, the mother plants of potato subjected to high temperature treatment helped to raise virus-free plants, although the number was less, but without thermotherapy, they could not obtain even a single plant when the plants were given, subjected to thermotherapy. At least six out of 248 plants were free of virus. So the procedure followed is that the mother plants are heat treated. That means they are given the thermotherapy. From there, the nodal leg segments are taken and cultured. 
And when the shoot develops from these nodal segment, shoot tip culture are raised from these aseptic shoot to raise the virus-free plants. Shoot tip with chemotherapy, as I said in nature, people have tried virucidal compounds, but it is not a practical method to control. But in culture, sometimes the shoot tip culture has been combined with the chemotherapy by adding virucidal compounds such as virazol or riboborine in the culture media. A very recent method that has been developed to eradicate viruses, which is simpler and allows using a larger explant is cryotherapy, which means the shoot tips are exposed to liquid nitrogen temperature which is minus 196 degrees Celsius for one hour. Briston in 1997 was the first man to take the poorest root stock was freed by plum mosaic virus. In potato, comparing the different methods of shoot tip virus elimination, the shoot tip culture gave 56 to 62 percent virus free plants. Thermotherapy gave 56 to 62 percent should tip culture and thermotherapy when combined did not increase it. But one hour of uh, cryotherapy at minus 196 degrees Celsius improved the eradication of virus from up to 84 to 93 percent with 90 to 100 percent survival of the plants. It has been successfully applied to potato virus S, potato virus X, potato virus Y, and from potato, and a number of other viruses from um, fruit trees. In this case, the advantage is that you can use a larger explant. This is a flow chart showing you the technique of cryotherapy. You have infected in vitro stock cultures, excise the shoot tip, Manipulation of shoot to increase their tolerance by dehydration and using the cryoprotectant. Then you use subject it to vitrification by dehydration and treat it now with the liquid nitrogen. Post culture for survival and plant regeneration, and then the plants are indexed. Here is a picture showing you the cryotherapy effect. The cryotherapy alone. What you see is the red cells are dead cells and green cells are the live cells. And the red cells are the mature, differentiated cells and green are the meristematic cells. When you subject it to cryotherapy, most of the mature cells die, which are shown brown in the picture, but there are still some virus-infected red cells. When you do shoot tip culture, this is when you do thermotherapy and Shoot tip culture after thermotherapy, again, the virus elimination is not very effective. But if you do shoot tip culture after thermotherapy and then exposed to cryotherapy, you say most of the unwanted cell, most of the red cell which are infected with virus are dead. It's the only the green cells which are free of virus are alive. And when you culture such a shoot tip, the plants only develop from the green virus-free cells. The third technique that has been developed is the in trees, such as dahlia, citrus, peaches. The problem is that when you do shoot tip culture of the tree species, it is very difficult to root them. The shoots may develop, but rooting is difficult. Therefore, the alternative is to when the shoot develops, where you can take the shoot tip and graft it on a rootstock, if you see here, a tiny little bud has been grafted on the rootstock. On the B, you will see the shoot tip has made a union with the grafted stock, and it will now develop into a full plant. And this has been applied to a number of fruit trees. Once you have done either shoot tip culture or any other method of virus eradication, it is not sure that all the plants are free of viruses. Therefore, 
it is very important to do virus indexing and certification of these plants raised to shoot tip culture either after thermotherapy or after cryotherapy or without any further treatment. Because all plants raised from shoot tip culture are not free of virus. And one should remember that virus free plants are not virus resistant. Once you transfer to the field, they are liable for reinfection. Therefore, all plants to be indexed by more than one method. One method is not enough because there are a number of methods to check viruses. You can check by transmission method. You can check by microscopy, like electron microscopy. You can use the ELISA technique and the or the DNA method. And certified virus plants to be maintained in net house, otherwise they will get reinfected. So as I said, there are biological methods of transmission to check the presence of virus, there are electron microscopy method, there's serological method such as ELISA, and there are nucleic acid based method like PCR, nucleic acid hybridization, complementary RNA, and DNA microarray te technology. Now, importance of virus elimination. Yield losses due to virus infection may be up to 100%, leading to complete crop failure. Facilitates international exchange of germplasm. Once you have certified that your plant is free of viruses, then you can send this material across the international boundaries. Otherwise, the quarantine will not allow its move enter into the other country. In ornamental plants, may improve the color, yield, and size of the bulbs. There was a gain of about 20% yield in peanut by removing peanut bottle potivirus and of peanut stripe potivirus. Elimination of associated virus from whitus vinifera, the grapes, increased the vigor and the yield. There are some risks when you remove the viruses. Because it is known that there is a phenomenon of cross-protection. That means mild viruses protect the plant from more severe virus. And secondly, when you do shoot tip culture, you're not eliminating only bad viruses. You're also removing good viruses. And cross-protection makes the plant more susceptible to more severe viruses. And thirdly, there are some horticulture traits which are induced by viruses. For example, their variegation in some ornamental plants is because of the presence of virus. So if you remove virus, that horticulture trait is gone. Similarly, in citrus in Australia, they have induced the stunting virus, which makes the plant short so that you can do mechanized harvesting. So if you remove that virus, the tree will grow larger. Here is an example where the garlic plants, which was imported from Japan into New Zealand, and the New Zealand quarantine asked the people who imported that they will burn it because it contains the garbal mosaic virus, or they should make it free of virus. So these plants were taken to the laboratory, shoot tip culture, the plants were raised, and the, after raising the plant, they were transferred to the glass house and tested an index. A large number of these plants were free of virus. Those which were not free were destroyed and discarded. And when these plants were growing in the field, it produced large A-grade bulbs for them. And here is a summarized chart of the method of producing virus-free plants and indexing of the plants raised by this to ensure that it is free of virus. We may now conclude that the plants are infected with a large number of pathogens, which is well known. They are affected by fungal pathogens, bacterial, or even viruses. Whereas the fungal and bacterial infections can be cured by the application of fungicides and antibiotics, there is no effective method to control virus diseases. Therefore, the agriculturists normally follow the method of roguing, 
in which the infected plants are removed and destroyed. In field, there is no effective method to eradicate virus from the plants. However, tissue culture provides a very effective method to eliminate viruses, which is now widely followed by horticulturists. This technique was invented in 1950s by a French scientist named Morel. He, working on dahlia, cultured the shoot tips of dahlia and raised shoots from there. And many of the shoots that developed from the shoot tips of plants infected with dahlia mosaic virus were free of the virus. Unfortunately, these shoots could not be rooted. Therefore, these shoots were grafted on a seedling stock to establish full plants. In other words, he was able to raise full virus-free plants of dahlia for infected, from infected individuals. After that, this technique is being routinely used to eradicate viruses either alone or in combination with thermotherapy and chemotherapy. And more recently, we have cryotherapy, which is also very effective in eliminating viruses. In this lecture, therefore, we have described three main techniques, namely shoot tip culture, micrografting, and cryotherapy. Sometimes these need to be combined together depending on the virus and the host plant. Thank you.